Peace and blessings. Welcome back to the channel once again, where we talk all things health and healing from a holistic perspective. And today will be no different. Today, we're going to talk about how you can optimize your detoxification systems. Okay, your natural innate detoxification systems. Now, here's why this is so important. It's because we're getting toxicity at a level that our ancestors, even our great grandparents never got an inkling of. Okay, um, when we look at the food supply, it's totally different today. You know, an apple today is not what an apple was in 1952, not only in terms of nutritional value, but also in terms of like, you know, the amount of toxicity that they're putting in these things in terms of pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides, okay? Also, a lot of things aren't grown from original seed anymore, okay? So if it's not grown from an original seed, then what is it grown for, okay? Uh, so that's just food alone. But think about the amount of air pollution that we have today, you know, uh, as compared to our great grandparents. Like back in the days, there was one car for the whole family. Now you may have a family that has three or four cars. The mom has a car, the dad has the car, the kids have a car, okay? Now, now you have millions upon millions of people on the road uh, daily in one city. Uh, now you're getting that air pollution. We're talking about things that they're spraying in the air. We're talking about how we have industrialized since the 1950s, okay? Uh, and so many things are now polluting not only the air, but the soil, the water supply. Uh, I can go on and on how our products today, our cosmetic hygienic products are toxic today. So the toxicity levels today compared to our ancestors, even our great grandparents is very different. The other thing that's really important to understand is that, and I've learned this through working with people individually, is that all detox systems aren't created equal, okay? So not everybody has the function or the high level of function of liver function that one person has or kidney function or ability to digest, process, and eliminate food. Everybody's systems are different. Some people have different abilities to create certain antioxidants like glutathione, which is a major um, key when it comes to our detoxification pathways. So all detoxification systems aren't created equal either. And they can even do genetic testing to determine the effectiveness of your detoxification systems in your body, which we'll go over in just a second. And the other interesting thing that I found was they did a, they, they, they were digging up bones that were 300 years old and they were looking at the toxicity levels of our ancestors 300 years ago. And we have almost 300 times the amount of toxicity in our bodies. In this case, just the bones alone, okay, compared to us today. So the toxic levels are very different. I know we look back at our ancestors and we think, you know, lead and mercury poison, which is a whole nother video that I'll get into, but compared to our ancient ancestors and even our ancestors, you know, um, 300 years ago, or even our great grandparents, it is very different. So let's talk about those detoxification systems. So we do have systems that are innate in our bodies that are designed to get rid of toxicity. The only unfortunate thing is that our bodies, again, are receiving a level of toxicity that it was not designed to handle and it's not designed to recognize. And if it can't recognize, it can't really do anything with it in many cases. So what happens is, a lot of these toxins begin to accumulate in our bodies, okay? And not only in our bodies, but in our tissues and our organs specifically, and that's where the dysfunction of our tissues and organ systems begin to break down. Now, here's why that is so key and essential. When the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, so these are two very key organizations. The EPA is supposed to, is supposed to be our protection or guard, guard dog agency in terms of what is in our environment, what is being produced by these companies, manufacturing companies, etc. cetera, uh, what is being dumped, how things are being properly, you know, eliminated and, you know, how things are being even manufactured. Okay. 
And what they're supposed to do is protect the environment so that the environment doesn't affect us, okay, as citizens, okay? So when you look at the EPA, that's what the, their job is to protect what's coming from the outside, okay? Then when you look at the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, they're supposed to be protecting what comes on the inside in terms of what we eat and also the drugs that we use, okay? And when you look at what happened in 2018, I think there were over 18,000 drug recalls. Um, when you start to look at the amount of food that they're allowing in our system here, as compared to other countries where they ban America's food is, and you can go check this video out on this channel, America's food is banned in other countries. Okay, the vast majority of American food is banned in other countries. And the only reason that you will see American products in other countries is because they change the ingredients and make those products healthier. Okay, so if you see a bag of Lay's potato chips or, you know, uh, even ketchup, okay, and it's the same company, uh, same American company here, and you compare that, that same bottle of ketchup, that same bag of potato chips, and you look at the ingredients, the ingredients look very different. They look healthier, okay? And not only do they look healthier, they look less toxic as well, too. It doesn't sound like chemistry when you're reading off the ingredients in many cases. So it's important to know and understand that everything is different now, okay? And the FDA is allowing things because, again, it's the Food and Drug Administration. So they're in charge of what's allowed to be called food and what's allowed to be put in our food. And they're not doing a good, good job when it comes to our food. So as a result, we have to become our own search dogs. We have to become our own police when it comes to our food. Because if you depend on them, you're gonna be in the position that we are today, okay? Now, with that said, again, we have natural innate detoxification systems that do work, but they can't work because they're getting so much toxicity that over the, over the hundreds of thousands of years that have, as humans have been evolving and uh, adapting to the environment, we were never exposed to. So if you look at the entire um, you know, human lifespan over the last, let's just say 300,000 years, okay? In terms of like the amount of toxicity that we're being exposed to, if you look at that timeline, those toxins that we be, we're being exposed to today in 2023, those toxins literally just came on the scene in the last three seconds of hum, human existence. Okay, just put that in perspective for a second. In the last three to five seconds of human existence, we're now getting exposed to toxins and chemicals that our bodies, our detoxification systems have never seen, have never been able to adapt to, okay? And so this idea or notion that, you know, we have detoxification systems, so they just readily work because that's what they do. Well, that's what they did when things were natural, but they're not natural today, okay? So what are those detoxification systems? You have your liver, okay? You have your lungs, okay? You have your lymphatic system, you have your kidney, you have your gut, and then you have your skin, okay? All right, so that's six, and then for a woman, she has a womb, so she also detox, detox through the womb as well, too. Okay, so that, those, those, those are like seven of our detoxification systems, okay, that we have in our body that are designed to get rid of waste, that are designed to eliminate toxicity, that are designed to eliminate excess hormone that we don't need, like estrogen, okay? And when these detoxification systems or organs get overly saturated and start to accumulate all of this toxicity, they begin to break down and don't function the way that they need to. This is why you're seeing hemodialysis clinics and in neighborhoods like you're seeing McDonald's now, okay? You're seeing just as many today because people's kidneys are failing because of the exposure to the toxicity. This is why you're seeing so many people have gut issues. Again, that's our detoxification organ okay, to eliminate waste, also to process our food as well too. But again, it's getting so much waste, okay, so much toxins going into the system is destroying the system, okay, so it's accumulating in the gut, okay, same thing with the skin, 
You're seeing so many people with skin issues, psoriasis, eczema, the list goes on, sarcoidosis, all kind of things, okay? You're seeing issues with the lungs, okay? People are having these hardened tissues in the lungs. You're seeing people have uh, a lot of um, liver issues, you know, hepatic cirrhosis. You're seeing fibrosis of the liver. You're seeing fatty liver. As a matter of fact, if you go back to the 1990s, if somebody had fatty liver, uh, disease, then it was almost 80 to 90% certainty that they had an alcohol problem. Whereas today, that is not the case. The vast majority of people who have fatty liver disease don't have an alcohol problem. And it's coming from our food. Okay, so it's so important. To, we know we have detoxification systems, but they're not working because our environment has changed in terms of the chemicals we're being exposed to and our food has changed as well too. And then the drugs that we're using don't help with that process because most of the drugs are actually processed through our liver, okay? And through that constant processing, some people, I've seen patients have upwards of 10 to 19 drugs. You know, when they have these complicated conditions and multiple conditions like diabetes, heart conditions, autoimmune conditions, all of these conditions combined, I've seen people have upwards of 19 medications. So imagine processing something synthetic, 19 versions of it, okay? Um, and here's the other really important thing that isn't really being talked about. Most of the toxins or chemicals are being studied individually, but we're not talking about the tens of thousands of chemicals in our cosmetic and hygienic products, in our, you know, our food supply, and the environment, the list goes on and on, household products, et cetera. We're not talking about the accumulative effect of how all of those toxins affect the body. We only look at them individually. So when they're creating the standards for what is safe um, for mercury, what is safe for phthalates, what's safe for parabens, what's safe for you know, high fructose corn syrup, when they're creating these what's normal ranges of what's safe, Okay, they're creating them based on that one individual thing. They're not thinking about these tens of thousands of chemicals that are being introduced to your body on a daily basis. And that is what's causing so many people to have health issues. Okay, that's what's causing people to break down. Okay, uh, the vast majority of people's chronic illnesses that they're experiencing, they're experiencing that chronic illness as a result of toxicity. Okay, but this is also why I mentioned before, when we're in school as healthcare professionals, they don't teach us food as medicine. Okay, so we don't understand that the food is actually toxic. And they don't really do a good job of helping us understand toxins, even though we take a class called toxicology. We don't have a full understanding of that either. So we really can't address the issue because we don't know the cause. And those are the two primary causes, okay? So let's talk about how these toxins are impacting your health, some of the things that they're causing. Brain fog, okay? So uh, they not only can cause cognitive issues around brain fog, but they also can lead, lead to neurological issues as well and create conditions like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, okay? So this could be a direct cause, okay? Uh, having all of these toxins in your body, okay? Also, Skin issues, as I mentioned before, because the skin is one of the primary elimination organs, a detoxification organ. So the skin is going to be one of the primary ways that the body is going to try to get rid of these toxins. But you have to understand a lot of these toxins are very acidic. And just like anything that's acidic, it can harm living tissue. So it definitely can harm the living tissue on the outside of your body. OK, and so if you're having skin issues, on the outside and it's damaging your skin from the inside out, imagine what kind of damage it's causing on the inside of your body, okay? Just think about that for a second, okay? Also can cause gut issues, can cause chronic fatigue, you'll be tired all the time, fertility issues as well too. You're seeing a lot of men be infertile, a lot of women be infertile, a lot of miscarriages. This could be as a result of a lot of toxicity, cancer, okay? And people are like, wow, a toxins causing cancer. Well, can the the very basis of cancer is the fact that you have a mutated cell. Well, toxins 
can definitely be carcinogenic and cause mutation of cells. Okay, we know that with Roundup Ready because you can look and see all of the hundreds of millions of dollars in lawsuits. We know that with atrazine, which is another pesticide as well too, but we don't think about that when it comes to parabens, phthalates, endocrine disruptors, things that are commonly in your cosmetic and hygienic products that you're brushing your teeth with on a daily basis, washing your hair, washing your face with. We don't think about how we're getting, giving ourselves those microdoses every day. Now let's talk about some of those top toxins and then I'm gonna give you nine ways that you can actually optimize your detoxification system. So some of the common toxins are heavy metals, endocrine disruptors that I mentioned before. Those endocrine disruptors are paraben phthalates that you commonly find in household products and also cosmetic and hygienic products, okay? Food chemicals, you know, uh, thickening agents, emulsifiers, dyes, you know, all of those type of things that you're looking at the ingredients you can't pronounce much of the time, those food chemicals as well too. Forever toxins that we're not only finding in our Teflon pans, you know, when we're cooking, but we're also finding in our clothes now, like POFAs. And these forever chemicals are called forever chemicals because they do not leave your body, okay, readily, okay? So they're in your body forever, okay? Unless you have something that we'll talk about in a second, all the ways you optimize your body um, that could push them out, okay? You also have pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides. Um, this is one of the reasons why farmers have one of the highest rates for Parkinson's disease, okay? Because they're constantly being exposed to pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides. We also have plastics in the environment, fake food, okay? Synthetic food that is on the growth, and you'll see that the FDA is approving cloned meat and all kind of cloned this and cloned that, so fake food. And also endotoxins. These are toxins that are being created from the inside of your body, quite often by parasites and yeast, things of that nature, okay? So these are just a few ways that you're getting all of this toxicity. So now that we talked about the scary part, let's jump into how do we optimize our detox systems, okay? First, I always like to start with the simplest things. The simplest solution is usually the, the best solution, okay? So the first thing, you need to pee, okay? You need to pee, poop, sweat, and breathe, okay? Pee, poop, sweat, and breathe, okay? When you pee, you're eliminating uric acid from the body, but you're also eliminating a lot of toxins. You'll find that, uh, you'll find a lot of uh, heavy metals in the urine, okay? Because that's a way that the body is getting rid of a lot of the toxins like heavy metals through the kidneys, okay? So pee, sweating. Sweating is another way that we get rid of heavy metals, but it's also a way that we get rid of a lot of other toxins too. So you sweat through sun exposure, you sweat through the sauna, you also sweat through movement, okay? And when you're moving, you're moving the lymphatic system and the lymphatic system is the waste system in the body. It gets rid of waste, okay? It takes in the waste so that the body isn't affected. As a matter of fact, you have far more lymphatic vessels and lymphatic fluid in your body than you actually have blood, okay? So the body knows that it needs to get rid of waste and things aren't, that aren't needed. But the downside to the lymphatic system is if you don't move, you don't move the waste. The, may, the waste gets stagnant, okay? And so again, sweat is a way that we get rid of a lot of solvents and a lot of plastics out of the body, but are also a lot of heavy metals as well too. Pooping, most people are constipated and most people are constipated because the un unfortunate thing is if you look at the medical definition of constipation is three or less bowel movements in a week. Now, let me tell you something. If you're having three or less bowel movements in a week, you're not only constipated, you are full of it. You are impacted. So with that being said, even our definition of what's normal digestion is off. It's weird, to be honest with you. So you have to understand that, but most people are not having bowel movements every day, okay? And that's just a fact. And so it's important that we know we gotta optimize our pooping, okay? Our ability to eliminate, you know, by going to the bathroom, 
okay? Breathing, okay? As I mentioned before, the lungs are a way that we are actually detoxify, uh, detoxify the body as well too. So doing deep diaphragmic break, breathing will help, okay? Exercising, of course, gets the breath up as well too. But that deep diaphragmic breathing where you're breathing in, opening up your chest, pushing out your belly, getting a full breath of air in, that's a way that you actually can detoxify the body of gases, okay, as well too, and other toxins that can come out in the gas form as well too, all right? Staying hydrated. It's important to understand the importance of hydration when it comes to detoxification because here's why. Most of the toxins are going to be eliminated with a solution, and that solution is water, okay? All right, you need water to be able to detoxify. You need water to have a bowel movement. You need water to be able to poop. You need water to be able to sweat. So if you're dehydrated, you can't poop, you can't sweat, and you cannot pee, okay? So it's going to be a really big issue. So you have to stay hydrated because it's one of the primary ways that we remove toxins from the body. So when you're dehydrated, you're literally putting your body in a state of an emergency, okay? So that's really important. Um, healthy nutrition, because a lot of the detoxification systems, organs require your nutrition in the form of, you know, antioxidants, in the form of enzymes, in the form of phytonutrients. If you don't have those in your body, then your detoxification process is going to be incomplete. And if you look at phase one and phase two of detoxification in the liver and the body, what you got to notice is that B vitamins, all kind of things are required. Antioxidants are required. So if you're deficient in these things, you're not going to be able to properly break these toxins down so they can be eliminated out of the body. Top foods. Some of the top foods, you got to have fiber in your body. If you don't have fiber, you're not going to be able to have a bowel movement. And also fiber is there to, especially insoluble fiber, is there to collect some of the toxicity in your gut as well too. So you got to eat fiber. And the only way you're going to find fiber is in nature, in plants, okay? Fiber is not in meat. Fiber is not in dairy. It's not in eggs. You only can find it in plants. So you got to eat plants. And you got to eat a lot of plants in their original form, which means raw. So fruits, salads, things of that nature, okay? Uh, green leafy vegetables, you gotta get a lot of those in because a lot of those actually have a lot of the antioxidants, the magnesium, the zinc, all of those type of things that you need, again, for the, the importance of the entire detoxification process. And especially the green leafy vegetables or green vegetables that have sulfur, sulfur, uh, sulfur compounds in them. And the reason why those are so important is because they increase glutathione and glutathione is a major antioxidant in the detoxification pathway. Okay, if you don't have enough glutathione and actually there's a test where you can test to see if you're producing enough glutathione because if you're not producing enough glutathione, the issue is going to be breaking these toxins down, which means they're going to accumulate. Okay, so hugely important. Um, onions, leeks, um, things like scallions, chives are really helpful as well too. Spices and herbs because they can not only contain a lot of antioxidants, um, but they contain a lot of nutrients required as well too. Herbal teas, so drinking herbal teas, pomegranate. Pomegranate is one of the few things that has a healthy bacteria which is key for, again, detoxification, but also breaking down food as well, too. It has a key bacteria in it called Acromantia, okay? And it's very hard to get this from other places. And they've done study where they've been able to compare those who have enough Acromantia in their microbiome and those who do not. And they have saw that people who have insufficient amounts of Acromantia have increased rates of cancer as well too, especially around colon cancer. Okay, so it's really important that we get that in as well too. Brazil nuts, because they contain selenium, which is often a precursor for making the glutathione that I talked about before. And also it, the uh, uh, Brazil nuts contain zinc as well too, which is a major key when it comes to our immune system, okay? Sun exposure. 
Sun exposure not only is good because it keeps us in circadian rhythm, okay? And when you're in circadian rhythm, um, that actually is very healthy to the immune system, but also is very healthy to the detoxification system. Uh, sun exposure also produces vitamin D as well too, which is key for the detoxification pathway as well too. So 20 minutes of sun exposure will help to reduce the amount of toxins in the body as well too. So sunbathing, okay? And responsibly, okay? Number nine, final number nine is going to be quality sleep, okay? You got to get quality sleep. And the reason why is that when you're sleeping, that's when your body is actually detoxifying. That's when it's cleansing itself, okay? And I'm going to just make it make common sense real quick. When you sleep and then you wake up, most people have to have a bowel movement sometimes and most people have to pee, okay? Most people have mucus coming out of their eyes. Most people have bad breath in the morning. That's your body removing waste. All of those are signs of the body removing waste. Okay, so it's important to know and understand. Sometimes you wake up, you'll have some pimples. Again, because your body, while you were sleeping, resting, it was healing and repairing. Okay, so if you're not getting quality sleep, guess what? You're not going to be able to properly detox the body as well, too. And the body is going to be in a state of stress as well, too. All right, so that's number nine. I'm going to give you a bonus. The bonus is using herbs to detox. Okay, using herbs to detox. Herbs were made for the healing of the earth. And what most people don't understand is a lot of the herbs that I use in the detox, a lot of the herbs are made to pull out heavy metals. They're made to pull out mucus, waste from the body. They're made to correct some of the deficiencies as well too. So de herbal detoxification can be a major key. And so this is why I have the 14 day and the 28 day detoxes because our bodies aren't Amazon Prime. You won't heal or detox in a day, okay? So you, we really should be leave, living a detoxification lifestyle. Everything on a daily basis should be cleansing, nourishing, and detoxifying our bodies so that it can eliminate, okay, the things that aren't needed, okay? But we don't live a detoxifying lifestyle. Our food isn't detoxifying. The air isn't clean, the water isn't clean, our households aren't clean, our household products aren't clean. So as a result, that's why I do a de I do a herb my herbal detox every three to four months like an oil change. You know, like think about it. Like for our cars, we change the oil every three to four months. We change the spark plugs, the wires, the tires. We change the transmission fluid. We clean it on the inside, the outside. We do all of these things for our most, one of our most expensive possessions, but we don't do it for our most expensive possession, which is our human body, our greatest asset. So detoxification, which I believe herbs were made in nature to do very just that very thing. Um, there's a there's an interesting uh, case of a horse who got cancer. Two horses got cancer in a stable. Okay, one of the horses broke out of the stable, ran into the forest, start munching on this herb, okay? That horse healed of cancer. The other horse that never got out died of the cancer, okay? So animals are very intuitive in understanding how to heal themselves, what their bodies need. We aren't. So it's so important that we get back into the role and the tradition of using herbs for that very purpose. And the last thing is fasting. You know, fasting to the point that you can get in a state called autophagy is a major key as well too. Because autophagy is essentially detoxification or cellular cleansing as well too. So those are my nine plus my two bonus uh, ways that you can optimize your detoxification systems in your body and not only live a long life, but live a long, graceful life, age gracefully as well, too. Thanks for watching this video, but be sure to check the next video out that's right here. But everything I talk about is how do we take a holistic and natural approach to healing other than a man-made approach? And also, how do we prevent dis-ease in the body as well, too? Because, you know, they say,